Welcome to Photoshop ASAP. Today we're going to work on rotating this logo straight and then cleaning it up. As you can imagine, the very first thing we're going to want to do is come up to Image and pull down to Rotate Canvas and then over and down to 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now that's going to get us most of the way there, but not quite all the way. So the very next thing we're going to want to do is come down here to our magnification tool and kind of zoom in on the logo, making sure we at least pick up the I, the R, and the L. And the reason that we want to do that is because then we can come up to the, to the ruler across the top of the image and pull out a guide and line it up just underneath the baseline of these letters to make sure that the logo is straight. And as you can see, it's slightly counterclockwise. So let's put that back. We're going to now come over here to our eyedropper tool and click and hold down and pull over and down to the ruler tool. If we drag a line underneath the I, the R, and the L, just about like so, and then we come up here to Image and we pull down to Rotate Canvas and we pull down this time to Arbitrary we can see that our angle field is pre-populated with a number and it just so happens that that number is the exact number that we need to rotate this image straight so let's click OK and let's double check let's grab a guide and pull it out of the ruler and you can see it's pretty good so let's put that back the next thing we want to do is try to get rid of the shadows in this image caused by the wrinkles. So let's come over here to the image menu and we're going to pull down to adjustments and over to levels. Now in this module you can see on the top we have a histogram and on the bottom we have a scale, a grayscale, and these correspond to each other. The data in this, in the histogram, corresponds to the particular levels in the grayscale. So in this area right here, this lighter part of the scale, there's quite a bit of data right up in here. So to get rid of that what we're going to do is we're going to grab this slider and we're going to move it to the left and you can see it starts to make the shadows caused by the wrinkles to disappear. So we'll get it to just about right there. Now the letters have become a little bit lighter but to fix those all we have to do is come over here to the slider on the left and we're going to move that into the right until we start to see some data to about right there and then we click OK. Now that looks pretty good. The next thing that you're probably thinking that we want to do is come up here to to the uh, magic wand tool and start clicking on the letters to start cleaning them up. But the problem with that is it doesn't do a very good job of selecting the entire letter. In fact, because of the imperfections and all these hickeys, it's actually leaving a lot of data unselected. So to do a better job, what we're going to actually do is select on the white area. So we'll select on the background and we're going to slide over here to the left and pick up the counter in the E by holding down our shift key and holding down our shift key picking up the counter in the D and the O, the G, and the O. Now remember, we have the background selected and not the letters, and so if we want to clean up the letters, what we're going to have to do is inverse our selection so we do have our letters selected. So let's come up here to select and pull down to inverse. Now we have our letters selected, and let's slide over here to the left just to see how we did. Looks pretty good. Now what we want to do is come over here to the Channels palette, click on the Channels tab and get our Channels palette to come up. At the bottom you can see a dark rectangle, a dark gray rectangle with a white circle in it. Go ahead and click on that. What that's doing is gives, giving us a channel to work on to clean up those letters. So let's click on that channel and let's click on our Marquee tool and then we'll click anywhere in the image just to unselect everything. Now let's come down here to the Zoom tool, our magnifying glass, and we're going to zoom into the word the just to see how we're looking. It looks like the letter H needs a little bit of work here, so let's come up here to the marquee and we're going to drag a selection out just to pick up that hickey right there and delete it. Let's zoom into the H here, grabbing our zoom tool again. Now then what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to select a area that encompasses not just the main stroke but these very subtle pixels here and the reason why we want to pick those up is because we want to include them when we fix this imperfection right here along the stroke so if we come up here and select our move tool then come back over to what we selected and hold down our option key or our alt key on the PC you can see where you get a double arrow start moving that down if you hold down your shift key that will kind of restrict the movement back and forth so it doesn't move back and forth on you it just moves up and down there you go just about like that and now you can see that it's fixed that area where there used to be hickeys so now let's hit let's come up here to um, view and we're going to come down to fit on screen so that we can see everything and let's come down here and grab our magnification tool this time we're going to zoom in on a couple letters this way here the D and the I those look pretty good but it does look like the I right here needs to get cleaned up let's uh, drag a selection with the marquee tool pick those up and hit delete 
and we're just going to keep on moving across here now we're on the R here this one let's unselect everything clicking somewhere with the marquee tool and this one looks like it might be better handled with the brush but it, I've got white as my foreground color so let's use this tool this little double headed arrow which will transpose the colors for me now you, in order to see the size of that uh, brush if you hit your caps lock you can see the size of the brush make sure it's not on mine was actually on there make it give me a crosshair I did not want the crosshair at that time so let's uh, grab our hand tool and just keep moving across uh, you can see that looks pretty good oh the L here looks like it needs a little bit of help we're gonna grab the marquee tool and we're gonna pull down here and encompass that pick that up there about right there and then we're gonna hit delete whoops I had the wrong background selected again let's hit transpose on that on the change it to black as the background, hit delete again. Let's uh, grab our zoom tool, zoom in on here to see what the stroke looks like. Looks like the stroke needs a little bit of help so we're going to come in here and again select an area that we want to use to duplicate so we'll select that right there and come up here to our move tool again remembering to hold down the option key and sliding it up and of course if you hold down the shift key it's going to uh, make sure you don't go back and forth and that looks good right there. Let's unselect okay let's uh, come up here to view and we'll pull down to fit on screen and now we're going to come in here and we're going to zoom in on the O and the G and we're just going to kind of move our way across now you notice I'm not really that concerned about the background at this point and the reason why is that very soon here we're going to be selecting the letters and then inversing our selection to select the background and then once we have that selected we will actually delete the background and make it black and uh, looking at these letters it looks like it's actually time to do that so let's uh, reduce our our image here go up to view pull down to fit on screen come over here to our magic wand tool and just begin selecting the letters so we click on the white areas here holding down our shift key to make sure that uh, we can select more than one thing at once and here we pick up all these letters and making sure we don't miss the dot on the eye here and the R and the T and the Y and let's get the L the O the G and the O perfect okay now what I want to do is expand my selection just a couple of pixels so when I hit my delete it won't actually affect the letters at all so let's go up here to select and we're gonna pull down to modify over and down to expand and then there's two pixels there that's just about perfect now if we come up here to select and we inverse our selection you can see we have marching ants around the entirety of the black and also around these letters but what that's telling me is it's missing the letters and it's getting the black if I now hit delete which I will it's now filled the background with black and it has not touched our letters so our background is now clean and if we come over here to our alpha channel on the bottom of the channels palette we can see this round circle with the dots are on it and that tells me that that's a selection so if we click on that it turns all that work that we did into a selection there that's now a selection so now if we come over here and click on the RGB channel at the very top we can come over here to our layers palette and then down at the bottom click on the new layer icon which is the little notepad icon down here to the bottom right and then now we want to put our logo on there to fill our selection so we're going to come over here and make sure that we have black selected on our swatches and we're going to come up here to edit and we're going to pull down to fill and we're going to fill that with the foreground color and that is black so let's turn off our background color to see what that looks like that looks pretty good one thing I always like to do is come up here to image and pull down to trim and make sure transparent pixels is selected and what that will do is get rid of all the extra information around so your file is just that much smaller this logo is perfect now for Adobe Illustrator or Adobe InDesign so you can put it against any background color you want and you won't get that white background box that often will occur or better yet in this case you'll have a nice clean logo so that's pretty much all there is to it visit our website at www.photoshopasap.com to talk to a real live person about this or any other Photoshop issue you might have. Thanks for watching. Photoshop ASAP.